back to business. I'm going to do some bike videos again, what we're actually here for. Uh, doing my walk around check the other day uh, before work and noticed this. Come on in, Pen. Just look in on there. Wheel bearing's gone. Now, this is something that you can come across quite often on your bike. Wheel bearings, they just wear out, it's as simple as that. And when you do your walk around checks, this is one of the reasons you do them. You're checking your chain, you're checking your tire pressures, you're checking your bulbs working the horn. That's all very well and good, but there is nothing, absolutely nothing more important than the structural safety of the motorcycle. And this kind of thing, all you've got to do is grab hold of the wheel, grab hold of the bike, give it a wobble. If you feel any play in that back wheel, any donk, 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 you can feel it. Like a metal to metal play, there should be nothing there. The wheel should move freely. But that is moving, look. So I have absolute proof there's a wheel bearing gone. I have to replace it. It won't heal up, it won't get better. So I'll show you how it's done. Welcome back to the Woods Garage. Alright, the first job. Obviously, let's get the offending wheel out. In this case, back wheel. Front wheel bearings can go as well. So, so it's wheel off the ground. Adjusters right forward to give yourself loads of run. Wheel nut off. In my case here, washer out of the way. Wheel nut, washer. A little trick, put in order, wheel nut, washer, that's a Scott oiler, that can just sit there. Spacer block, we'll leave that there for a minute, come around this side, and push the wheel forward as far as you can, get all the slack available, then you can come underneath, pull the chain to one side, and roll the wheel. With enough slack, show you again, push the wheel right forward, get all that wacky whack, loose flappy uh, slack, Move the chain to one side, just rotate the wheel, and the chain will come clean off. Then lift it, once it's free of the bike, you can put it on the swing arm out of the way, and that's free of the wheel. Now before you go any further, if you've got a hugger, you might want to take it out of the way, but I'm a lazy git and I can't be bothered, so I'm going to leave that in there. So we're going to take off now the spacer block, and look, I'm laying them in order, all right? and that's even the orientation of the way it came off, not that way, but that way. So exactly as it comes off, lay it down so it goes back on the same way. Then that's naked, ready there. And we can then just, with your hand, just bang that out slightly, and it will start to come out this side. You shouldn't be using hammers. Don't ever hit the end of that thread, because you'll mushroom the thread, you'll thicken up the end of that, and you won't get the nut on. Right, now just inside there, there's a spacer. So once you've, once you've got about three or four inches or more, like that much, of axle sticking out, that is free. So get hold of the wheel and that spacer, just make sure you don't drop it, keep an eye on it. And we draw the axle all the way out, just going to put that down. And as we lift the wheel free, I'm going to just rescue that, that spacer and I'm going to put that down there as well. One, two, three, four, making a note in order. Same this side. As we come out here, got the caliper. I mean, if you want to, you can actually take the brake caliper off this. But to be honest, normally, just lift it free and sit it like that. You don't have to take the caliper off the carrier. It sits freely like that, and that is not doing any damage to the hose. I get flamed for this every time. This is an armored steel hose, perfectly safe. And on that one, I'm gonna rescue that spacer too, and put it down there, okay. The wheel's free, but drop it down there. This is workshop practice. This is the kind of thing that's going to save you emailing us and saying, oh, I took my wheel out and I don't know which order the spaces go back. This is the easiest way to remember. Remember, that came out as it is, so that goes in first. Then there was that wheel spacer, wasn't there? Then that went through the wheel. Then when he came to this side, we had that wheel spacer. Then we went through the axle. You've just done it, you shouldn't forget. Ain't odd. And we'll put that back in. And the end of there. Then the washer. 
In fact, it's that first, then the washer, then the nut. Now, it's not so much these outer parts here that cause you confusion, it's this. We get this kind of question, I'm going to clean all this up in here. You get this kind of question all the time, is what order they go back in? I took the wheel out, all the spaces fell on the floor and I can't remember what order it goes in. It's as simple as that. Chuck it all back in, in order. It might be, you might be ordering the parts for this. It might be a week before you come and put this back together if it's a long-term job. And remember, a week from now, what order they're in, when they start getting knocked around the bench, that's quite difficult, so that's how you do it. Hey, nice, it? Not really. Right, let's clean this up. Let's get that on the bench. Right, there we go. Just, as I haven't got the steel tops on the bench yet, I'm just protecting it with a towel. It's old towel as well. <laughs> right, okay, in, in the back wheel, you've got three bearings. You've got one in the sprocket carrier there, a big one. And then you've got one on the inside of the wheel, and we've got that one there, which is the one that's gone. You can even feel it there. So we've got to take them all out, but the first thing to do is remove the sprocket carrier. Put that down there, just lift that off. There it is, it just drops out. It's got rubber cush drive rubbers inside. Well, I suppose if they're cush drive rubbers, they would be rubber, wouldn't they? How about you for thinking? Mm. Right, so there we are. There's one wheel bearing there. There's another one there. And there's another one on the other side of the wheel. So we're gonna to have to replace all three of them. It's quite simple. When you buy these, you buy them in a kit. There's the kit. Um, which we got from M&P Accessories. Other suppliers are available. You said it. I can't even get the box open. All right, so as we see here, you get your seals. There's the two wheel bearings, and there's the sprocket carrier bearing there. They're all sealed bearings. They all come with fresh seals. The whole kit. How much was that, Pen? Would you like to know the price? Yes. What was the price, Pen? Tell them. Just £13.50. £13.50, that's not too bad. Now, bearings, ultimately people always come not flameless, but we've had this quite a bit. You don't have to go to Triumph for the bearings. Yes, you can go to Triumph for the bearings. You probably pay £15 each for the bearings, or more like 40 But you don't have to, it's not necessary. You can get these from any bearing supplier. Remember, Triumph don't make bearings. They order them from a bearing manufacturer and then if necessary get Triumph stamped in them. Yes they might be a higher specification but ultimately if you get a trusted aftermarket parts supplier like in this country M&P Accessories or MPS they're very trusted people and I've never had a part from them that's anything other than fine and that's okay for me. £13.50 instead of £13 each. So you saved yourself £30-£40 on buying these bearings. Right, first one we're going to do, we're going to do the wheel in a minute, but we get this one out of the sprocket bearing, uh, the sprocket carrier first. Let's get that out of the way. All right, first little offending part is the seal. Now, the seal lives on the outside. We're going to replace it. So if you're really, really stuck, you can use the same seal, but the chunk <laughs> that's in Penny's ear, <laughs> you just pop it out. You don't need to worry too much. Just pop those seals out. They aren't really reusable. Um, the idea is you've got that, that shaft going round in there, and as you can see, all the original grease just gets all mucked up. That's all gritty, I can feel it. That's absolutely horrible. So that's got to come out. That's held in by a circlip, which is that thing there. So we get some circlip pliers and take the circlip out. There we go, a bit fiddly. You can clean it all up afterwards. Now if you want to, you can replace the circlet, but there's no need, it's perfectly all right. I'll give that a little bit of a clean up with some memory afterwards. There it is, that's the old seal as well. You absolutely would positively never reuse that again. That is knackered. All right, let's clean out all that. Now we've got to just tap this out from the other side. Okay, now she's all cleaned up. This, to just describe or demonstrate the anatomy on this. We've got, uh, there's the bearing around the outside. This sort of, this piece here is a spacer. That bit there is just a metal spaced tube. It's that tube there. And it, it doesn't, it's not meant to be, you, know, you can just push it out with your fingers normally. There it is. Sometimes it needs a gentle tap. That's it and that knocks that out. And all that is is corrosion's held that in. It should just drop in and out with a, a free fit. That should just slide in and out there, but it didn't. So again, this is the cost. All of this is the cost, this is the state of this thing. I ride this in all the salt and the crap and filth, and it does come with a cost, um, wheel bearings being one of them. But that obviously 
That around the outside there is corroded up and it's stuck inside the bearing. So I'm going to clean that with Emery before I rebuild that. Now what we've got is the bearing. Now the bearing lives in that recess. It's an interference fit, which means it goes in hard. It's, it's basically the outer ring of this is exactly the same size as the hole it sits in. So it kind of forces its way in. So it needs to be tapped out. And all you need to do is come around the back end of it. I like to do the pieces of wood to give it space to go into and what I'm going to make sure of is that obviously don't do that because what you're hitting on you're using this as the support come in closer to the actual bolt heads of the sprocket carrier so that you're not pressing on the sprocket if in doubt take the sprocket off it's only so you just need to press against the bearing remember you're trying to wriggle this out like that. You're not going to beat one side because you'll just turn it sideways. So just either side, one, two, one, two, either side or three sides, and then gradually you'll clear it free. Now, you can see it's reduced its gap, it's coming out. When you're hitting on this, you can feel the difference between it bouncing back and yielding. So when that yields to the hit, you can feel it. There it is. And eventually, it's out. Okay? Now there's nothing... Can oh, you smell that? Mm. That's it. That's that. Smell that. That's stale grease. Can you smell that? Uh. <laughs> now this has got... <laughs> what Penny's going uh at is the sulfurous smell of bearing grease when it's just been kind of released from its, its perch forever. Oh, it stinks. It's sulfur. Um, if anybody smelled differential oil in the back of a diff or anything in a car, it's that smell. It kind of smells like, like poo, doesn't it? Ain't nice. Right, that bearing, incidentally, when you move it round, come in close. Let's get this, see if we can get this on the microphone. You can kind of hear it. It's making a noise because the rollers that live inside there, the little round cylinders that live inside, they're kind of all chewed up with cack and corrosion, that's what the problem is, which is why they're gradually going out. You, this is also why you wouldn't replace just one. There's nothing wrong with that, there's no play in it, it's just add it. So that's now ready for replacement. I'm going to put the new one in. So we come to the kit, and obviously that's the one. So here's the new bearing. Listen to that one. Right, now when we look at it, I can tell by the hit marks that it went in that way because that's where I've hit it on the back and that's the corroded side on the front. But what I'm looking for is whether it's handed, whether there's any side to it. They are completely universal. Nope. There's no inside, no outside. So that goes in either way. But before I put anything in there, I'm just going to clean up the hole. Clean the little hole up in there. And make sure there are no burrs or any little any little uh, sharp bits or anything in there so that when the new bearing goes in it goes all the way down now what you're looking to do is in here that recess that cr that ledge that the bearing sits on it's absolutely vitally important that you get that bearing all the way down firmly onto that ledge and it isn't still up in, in, and not quite the way home. Now, if you've got a little burr or anything, or any sort of disruption, if when you were hitting this side out, you've accidentally caught it or chipped it or something, what you must do is get in there with a file or something tiny and get it all completely perfect and smooth. It must be baby's bum in there, so that when the new bearing goes into place, it works and it goes all the way down the seats properly. Now, what I'm doing with this as well, where that Circle it goes and holds it in. I'm just clearing out the groove, baby. Just right, take some grease. And because this is going to be a metal to metal interface, I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of grease around the outside, but not on the bottom face because I don't want uh, it from preventing from squishing right down. I'm just going to put a very tiny amount of grease around the outside, just a smear just to get it moving when we start tapping it in. 
and it doesn't go in with any force, uh, there may be people out there thinking, oh, I was told you need a press for this. You don't need a press for this. Right, so get it lined up. And you can get that much with your hands because there's two stages to the hole. The hole that's there is the bottom bit that holds the bearing, then the top bit above the bearing is a little bit less. Now, if I then start hitting this or going like this, that would just be a great way to destroy the bearing. But what I'm going to do instead, clean that off, and I'm going to put the old bearing, best side first, on top of the new bearing, using the old bearing as a bearer. Ain't odd, is it, Pen? <laughs> right, now you can feel it. I'm going side to side. And when you hit it, you can feel it going in, A, with your fingers, and you can feel the hammer yielding. It's just, it's kind of going like that rather than the usual bounce. Now, if you heard that go dink, dink, dink at the end, that's it hitting home. That's its final when it gets in there. Now, I think that's... That ringing sound tone tells you it's right down to the bottom. If you turn it over, you can see that joint there, it's nice and close all the way around. So, just to get the old one out. But the old one's not in there with any... Oh, you bugger. There it is. It's not in there with any force because it, hasn't, it has to go down below the circlet groove to be under any force. So when this bearing is pressed in there, it's not pressed in, it's just kind of a bit of suction. Just get that out. So that's it. Next thing was the circlip, which taken any crap off it. Yes, I know I could buy a new circlip, or I could just put the old one back in. It's perfectly all right. Here we are. Now, what I tend to do is again with this little tiny screwdriver, just get in there to make sure that's fully inserted all the way around, all the way down, and finally the new seal. There we go. Right, obviously the seals go that way in. It's exactly the same size, you can just check against it. And they press in with your fingers, but again, just assist it with a little bit of grease around the hole so it slips in nicely. Makes things a little bit less resistant. And that just presses in with your fingers all the way around. Don't go using tools on that, it's not necessary. There it is. How's that, Pen? Done. Ain't odd, is it? No. Right, there we are. Cleaned up the spacer. Clean through inside it while you've got a chance. It's because the axle goes through there. Pop it down in, and it just sits. It just literally sits in there. It doesn't have any any force or any resistance that just sits inside the wheel bearing. So that's it, that's your sprocket carrier done. Set that to one side, and we get the wheel on the bench. Right, okay, um, I'm gonna show you about the wheel. The wheel's got two, two bearings, one either side, so that it's held either side on that. And I wanna show you something inside the wheel you may not have seen before. Have a little look down inside the bearing there. Now here, can you see, hang on a minute, I need to move the tilt. Can you see that bit of tubing? Yeah. Uh, there's a bit of tubing. Mm -hmm. Right, let me explain it. There's a bit of tubing that lives in between the bearings. If you imagine the two wheel bearings in the wheel, one either side, when you put the wheel nut on and you crush that up, you push it against this inner face, the inner ring. So we talk about the bearing like this. You've got a ring around the outside, a ring around the inside, and in between those two rings, you've got a series of rollers, like little tiny cylinders. And that inner ring is free floating. It just moves on its own like that. It just rolls on the little rollers. This one's a bit gritty because it's knackered. Now, obviously, when you crush down on that, the only thing holding that in place is the plastic carrier or that nylon carrier in between. There's nothing else holding that. So if you crush down on that with the wheel nut, all you'll do is you'll take that inner and you'll just push it in. You'll destroy the bearing. So in between the two bearings, inside that hub, there's a tube, a spacer tube. Simply a piece of tube that's the same size as the inner of that and it sits between the two bearings. So when you do the wheel nut up, you pull the bearings in on it, and it's all solid. The bearings are just held solid. They're not being pushed anywhere, they're just sitting against a solid tube. 
and that tube itself just boogies around in there. It doesn't have anything to fix to. You can do it with your finger, look. There, one side. It's that side. Push it back that way and there. Now, what that means is, in order to get to the other side of this bearing, so I can beat it out, I have got to shift that to one side. So you shift the piece of tube to one side, so it exposes the face of this bearing. And then, so push it to one side like that. Seeing an old screwdriver with lumps missing, then it's pushed that spacer tube to one side. So I'm pushing the screwdriver end up against the inner face of that bearing now, and then that way, and then click the spacer tube the other way to access the other side of the bearing. Now be sure never to hit in one place too long. Because remember what you're doing, if you've got a bearing that's in a hole, you need to drag it or drive it out of that hole in one piece. Every time you hit it one side, you're doing that to it. Then you need to go that way. So just little hits like that and work it out. If you hit it one side too much, you actually distort the hole that it sits in because it's a cast aluminium wheel rim. So when you beat too much one side, you'll damage the rim. So it's just little hats or even little hits. <laughs> little hats. So you've got hats on the brain. So I know. There we go, that side. goes just a couple of sharp taps either side just have a little check on it there it is look that's coming out nicely now that had a big recess just then so we just keep going and this just goes to show you can do this job without you don't need a press or any specialized tools in fact nothing special at all just common sense isn't it pen yeah Yep, there it is. Right, okay. I'm going to put the wheel just there for a minute. Now, this is the space that we spoke about. Just a, a, literally a piece of aluminium tube. As you can see, that is the hole it lives in. It doesn't, it doesn't sit on anything. There's no carrier. There's no loads of grease all packed in there. It just sits practically dry in there. So we'll come back to the spacer in a minute, but I want to show you this. This is what happens with the bearing. That bearing is knackered. Although I have been hitting on the inside and I took the plastic grease cover off, but you can see these are the, the rollers inside. There's a little ball bearing there. And they get grit and stuff in between them. And that's why they get knackered. And that's why you need to replace them. So that's that one out. Now, now, obviously, the beauty of it is rather than replace that one at this point, we've got perfect access now to the other side. So first of all, just take the Dust seal off. Try not to stick it in Penny's face this time. <laughs> there you go. Forehead. Forehead, okay. okay. Just get your little scrape around there. Grease, muck, take that out of the way. And again, you've got a little circlip in there, just like in the carrier, that just retains that bearing. And look, there it is, that's the offending bearing. Let's just wipe that off. Let's just clean all that up a little bit. Come back with the pen. Okay. Right, there we are. Now, this is the actual offending bearing that caused the problem, look. That's the problem. Look at that, check it often because remember this is, a, this is a cast aluminium wheel and it is moving. The circlip groove has disappeared, so that's now, it's now made some movement. If that was not going to move at that point, I would have heated the rim because the rim is aluminium, which is soft. Aluminium expands as a met metallurgically, aluminium expands faster than steel. The bearing is steel, the cast wheel is aluminium. So a little bit of heat around it with a blow lamp would have expanded the wheel away from it a bit and then you will get it to go. Fine, it's going there. There we are. 
it's, it's the bounce in the hammer. You don't get that bounce. It hits with a dead thud. There it is. There it is. And there's a bearing. I'll just put that there for a minute. Again, that's the offending bearing. Just feels like it's full of sand. Um, I mean, ultimately, I ride this bike every day. This is just wear and tear. There's no, nothing wrong, no complaint with this. And all our spare parts. Seals. Ridge. Right, put this one in first. That's the original bearing. Just check it. Bearings come in all sizes, so just make sure before you start trying to beat that into that hole that they haven't sent you one that is so many thou bigger. I mean, if, that's, if that was three or four thousandths of an inch bigger, it will crack this if you try and hammer it in. So don't always just assume that they've sent you the right parts. Um, things can get um, in, it labeled incorrectly in parts departments. It's perfectly human. Just make sure that's why you check things. Okay, clean around the hole, same as last time. A little clean around there, just doing this in real time for you really. There we go. Again, making sure that down there, where that bearing is gonna hit home, right down at the base, it's absolutely clean. And there's no cracks. Check inside here, because if you see a crack in there anywhere, you have a trashed wheel. And I kid you not, you might think it's okay, but it's your ass, isn't it? Don't be silly, just chuck the wheel out, get another one. Breakers yards, second hand stuff, that's what they're for. It's very rare, but it can happen. Right, that's lovely. It feels all smooth around there. Nothing in the way, no burrs. That's lovely. But what I am gonna do with that one, I'm just gonna get a little bit of emery paper, nice low 320 grit. I'm just gonna wipe it, literally. I'm not taking metal off here, I'm taking off that kind of corrosion that forms this side of the of the circlet and I'm not going into the bearing area I'm coming out outside the circlet just cleaning that up and in a wiping action no sanding don't go making that hole bigger by sanding it because the only bearing will fall out which might be very cool it <laughs> right here we go little smear of grease around the outside, that just eases it into position. If you go to your dealer to have this done, they should be rightfully charging you a couple of hours. Um, it is a couple of hours work, you take your time, you do a nice job. Right, doesn't want to go in any further, first of all. So we clean up the old bearing. We're going to use that again as a drift. Just pop that on top. And just drift it in by going round, working in triangles, and getting it all the way in without distorting it or rotating it. Not home yet. <laughs> That's gonna pinch. So look in there. Right, what I'm looking for is that touching base on its on its way down in, and that is all the way in. Can you see it, Pen? Mm, Can't be seeing it. No, that's all right. Just the last little tap. There it is. Takes a little bit of. There it is. Just that ping is it's just breaking its grip. There it is. That's it just lift it out right okay check all the way around that the circlet groove is equal and that it's not sitting at an angle it shouldn't be it shouldn't be possible but he why not check 
then pop your circlip back in. I know I should use a different head on these pliers, but I'm going to bother to find it. There we are. Make sure they're in completely. That's it. And finally, pop the seal on top of it. Again, the seal just pushes in with your fingers. Don't be tempted to use tools on a the seal. There's no need to. In fact, I'll do it around there. That's the one. That's it. That's it, there we are. Okay, so that's that side done. Now, the next thing, if you remember just now, where is it? We had this tube. Something that's very important to check is the condition of the tube. Uh, and it's quite important why as well. Now, let me show you this. On the bearing, this tube lives basically in there. And it's just aluminium, there's nothing much to it. It's very light, very soft therefore. As you can see, there's some little marks on it, even tiny little marks where I was just moving it around to get to the edge of the bearing to beat them out. And its job, as you can see, is to sit up against that inner ring, as I said, so that when you crush the wheel nut down onto that, that tube forms a barrier and stops the two inner rings of the bearings crushing in on each other. That's the only thing that stops them. Now, if this edge here or here is bruised or at an angle or dented or in any way damaged, that means that the support given to that inner ring will not be dead upright support. It will be maybe at an angle. That means when you bolt it in, that the center ring of the bearing will be under a pressure that way, which is okay for a few weeks, but after a while that's gonna knock that bearing out real quick. So it's important to just go around that, make sure that those ends are completely square there's no bruising. Bruising is indicated by a, a flare on the end. So run your fingers off the end of it. Obviously, if that's been bruised in on itself, it will flare out. So there's nothing, that's absolutely fine. So I'm gonna push that back in its little hole against that other one. Let's put it back on the bench. And that lives there. So that's sitting now on top of the other bearing. Right, and then when we put this new wheel bearing in place, when we beat this new wheel bearing in in a minute, that bearing doesn't have a seat. As we said just now, down inside there, there's a metal seat and the bearing sits against that seat. So you press that in there. But the seat for this one is that. So we have to make sure it's in place. So put that in place first. There's no circlip on this one and there's no seal on this one either. Over there. What we're gonna do is the same old trick. A bit of grease around the hole on this one. So this bearing, it will stop when it reaches that tube, that piece of tubing. Simple as that, it won't go any further. There we are. Try and get that as central as you can, and pop that bearing in place. Now you don't need to ask yourself uh, how far in should it go, it goes in until it stops because they have to make up with each other. So using your noddle, look down inside there and watch. Watch that that tube doesn't disappear off or drop anywhere, it will move around, it's meant to. Now if you have a look in there, Pen, have a look in there, mm -hmm. you still yeah. see a gap, so that's not in yet, is it? No. Obviously, in fact, we can see it sticking out here, it's not in yet. Right. Now what you're looking to do is, when you get close to it, Remember this, you could measure this with a, a mic before you started, but that inner tube must have room to move, but it doesn't need to be flopping around, but it also doesn't need to be held tight. You just need to tap this down until it touches, and I mean just like that. That's all it needs to be, nothing more. There is flexibility.
So when you're doing this and you're pushing it down in, there it goes. Right. Felt that. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Yeah, it heard it. Heard it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what I've got is there it is. Right. Watch. Can you see that? I've got a resistance there. You feel? Yeah. That bearing is touching that tube, but it's not trapping it so much that it can't move. All right. Mm -hmm. So get that in to that level. Push the bearing down until it just touches the tube. That means that when you bolt everything up on this bike in a minute, that nothing's going to actually whiz down on that too hard. Because remember, that sprocket carrier goes down on that. You don't have a seal around there, that's completely naked. But I will put some grease on it, just to kind of protect that top. Down inside. I did clean out the inside of that tube as well, before I put it all in. There we go. Right, sprocket carrier. Now on, that's the little tube that was that fits in there, and the outer rim of that tube, if you can see it, Ben, yep. that one, mm -hmm. that fits against the outside of the bearing here. Now, if at all possible, just to assist you getting your axle through afterwards, just reach down with your finger and just move that tube inside. It should still be movable with your finger, just enough so it's equidistant all the way around. There's no lip ledge on it, because when you try and put your axle through in a minute, it will go through all the easier. A bit of grease in that one as well. Bit of grease inside there. And there we go. And we pop that back in. Right. What I'm going to do now is rubber mallet. Hitting on the bolt heads, not on the sprocket. Is that a white pen? Because you distort it. The bend sprocket. Right, now feeling down in with your finger, you can feel for the, for the bearing. You can stick your finger in there if it's thin enough. You can feel that moving, you can feel the bearing, and there's about half a mil. So a little bit more. It floats about anyway, there we are, that's up against it. Right, job done. Now that is it folks, honestly, that is it. The wheel's now ready to reinstall. I've got um, intentions to do other things to this later on, but I just wanted to make this a wheel bearing video. This is a simple how-to on fitting the three wheel bearings that go inside your wheel rim. Simple as that. They're all nice and shiny fresh, and they're as simple and easy to fit as, what is it, the last about 45 minutes? Something like that. I know this is a long video, but this is one of them proper how-tos that we hope to last a long time and help a lot of you. So I'm just going to stick the wheel back in and we'll test it when it's done see if they actually work. <laughs> now, there we are. That's better. Right. So the first thing was this block. On that way. Then... Scotter. Washer and no. That's it. There we are. Okay. Make sure that all the torque settings that you use on the bike, you check them all, get all the torque settings correct, especially the wheel nut. It'll be somewhere between 70 and 80 foot pounds for most bikes. Make sure you do that correctly and also set your wheel alignment. We have a video on wheel alignment. If you're not sure how to do it, it's pretty straightforward. You just make sure that each side of the swing arm is adjusted back equally so that the wheel sits straight in the bike. Uh, I'm not quite sure on the chain tension. I've set a little bit more than uh, as much as I would normally have, but it might need a bit more adjustment later on. I'm going to test right at first. Get that up. Right now, if you come on in, man, if you just see what I mean, back where we started, no play at all, absolutely still, perfect. So there we are, a good job, let's get cleared up. Okay, right, um, 
Now in simple terms, if you're going to do a wheel bearing replacement on your bike, it's extremely easy. You saw how it's done. Two, three wheel bearings, depending on what you've got. What we bought was a kit from a supplier and it comes for several different bikes. This was for about six different Triumphs, you know, TT600, Daytona, even Street Triple, it's exactly the same kit of bearings. And that's why when you've finished, you get a seal left over. There were three seals in there, but the Tiger only needs two seals, just the outside two main seals, doesn't need a set of seal, there isn't one in there. So in that sense, you've got your old parts. I always use that, make sure that there are no bits left over that you did need. And there it is, as simple as that. Now there's a video on wheel alignment and chain adjustment. That is all part of getting the rear wheel out of the bike. So if you need that, then you can't find it. It will be in the Suzuki Bandit set. If you're not sure, give us a shout out. I'll send you a link to it. And that's it. Do you recommend? Yep, thank you. £13.50. Four wheel bearings replaced. If you went to a dealer, they'd probably charge you, I would imagine, £150 to £200 to have that done. And that's not wrong. I'm not being critical here. I had a bit of flame in from a few dealers recently, and I do need to defend them. It is expensive to run a business. To run a workshop that does that kind of work, you've got to pay a mechanic. That mechanic has a right to an income. And that they're a qualified man. They spend many tens of thousands of pounds on tools, these guys, so they do have a set wage. And those guys cost a lot of money for the dealer. So I'm defending them in a little way. It will cost you 150 to 200 quid, quite rightly, to have that done in a dealership. But honestly, £13.50 for the bearings, do it yourself. It is as simple as that. There's one other thing, wasn't there, Ben? Yep. Just one other thing. Now, we've said to you a load of times we're going to get involved in a project, a build. We've got the bike. We bought the donor bike today, this morning, and it's arriving on Monday. It's Sunday, at, uh, was it Saturday now? At time mm -hmm. we're this. Monday, we're picking the donor bike up, so the midweek video will be revealing the donor bike that we are going to rip apart and turn into something awfully more interesting. Sure will. Excited, Ben? Yeah, you really. Will be. <laughs> I know I will be. There we go. Thanks for watching. Any problems, any questions, just drop us a comment in the box as usual. Take it easy. Ride safe. See you next time.